a scholar, an award-winning teacher, and supremely capable and passionate administrator. Serving the University of Rochester for more than 40 years, he has played various roles in support of students. Although he had plans to take a sabbatical year, he currently serves as the university's interim president. A renowned epistemologist, did I get that right? I got, yes. <laughs> he came to the University of Rochester in 1975 as an assistant professor of philosophy. He served as chair of the Department of Philosophy for 13 years before becoming dean of college. During his tenure as dean of college, he worked to strengthen the undergraduate Rochester curriculum, which he helped create and implement. He worked closely with faculty to develop new programs, especially those focusing on multidisciplinary or community-based learning and new collaborations with the Medical Center's Department of Community and Preventative Medicine to create a new undergraduate public health major and with the Simon Medical School to develop an undergraduate <laughs> and undergraduate business major. He is known for his principal views, his collaborative approach to problem solving, and his commitment to diversity and inclusion. And he demonstrated all of these characteristics as co-chair of the 2016 Presidential Commission on Race and Diversity. Known for his positive and motivational attitude towards progressive learning, his dynamic range of acquaintances, and principal views, I would like to introduce Rich Feldman, interim president of the U of R. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. It's, it's uh, very nice to be here, and uh, that's a lovely introduction. I, I really appreciate. I appreciate all those kind words. Uh, and it, it, it is fun to be here for me. Uh, this is. Uh, I, I, well, my wife and I lived here in, in the neighborhood uh, early on in, in our county of Rochester on Route 90 Bullet Drive. We uh, were members of the community association. As I recall, my wife worked on some real estate committee that, that, that existed back then. And I, I think it ended up getting in some kind of trouble because they were acting as realtors without a license or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> But, but in any case, uh, 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 so this is this is coming home, and Google Maps actually took me right 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 close to my house on my way over here tonight. So it, it was fun to be back, and beautiful to see the school. Um, uh, it, it's really lovely. Uh, and and I got here just in time for the hard fought elections uh, during the meeting. It, it reminded me of what I saw on CNN last night about the Florida Senate race. <laughs> You'll get through the recounts. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so um, I really am pleased to, to be here to, to talk for a few minutes and to, to talk about uh, the, the university's connection to the Rochester community and to, and to this community and, and just say a few words about that. Before I do, I do want to recognize uh, people, uh, Harlan Ost, who uh, I heard from recently, and I know he's unable to, told he's unable to be here tonight, but I know he's a longtime leader and advocate for the community, recognize the Brown, other officers of the, of the organization, and uh, thank all of you for being here and for working on behalf of, of your community, the betterment of, of the neighborhood and, and this community. Um, the, I'm going to start a little bit of a long view uh, and sort of my perspective on the university and, and the community. Uh, as, as was said, I, I started here as an assistant professor in 1975. I like to tell people I was 12 years old at the time. It's not true, but I, I like to say that. Um, but in any case, back then, I'd say the university's attitude toward the whole of the Rochester community was pretty standoffish. Uh, we, were, we were not much, much engaged at all. We were focused on, the university was largely focused on its students and the education it provided its students. And I think we just didn't, didn't much engage. We're a national university. We're attracting the students from around the country and around the world. And, the local, the neighborhood just wasn't, I'd say, in our sights very much. The medical center, a bit, maybe had a little bit different perspective, but uh, 
for, for our undergraduate students, especially, and students in the college, you studied chemistry, you studied history, and it was the same thing whether you were in Rochester or whether you were some other part of the country. It didn't really matter if it was us or self-contained in of our many universities around the country and that kind of attitude back then. And, and I'd say if there's a thing that's changed over the 40 plus years that I've been here, it is the university's relationship to the Rochester community. And going from that insular attitude toward a much to, uh, an embrace of its role in the Rochester community and an engagement with the community. So if you think about uh, the connection to the local community, you know, the university, what's changed over the years, I mean, it, it's just remarkable to me uh, we're celebrating, I think sometime very soon, the 10th anniversary of, um, of Brooks Landing, the, the, the residential space across the river. Uh, I was dean of the college while that was built, and it, it, was a, it was a significant step for us to decide to put, to have, to which our employees can uh, get, get assistance with purchasing homes in the neighborhood. I think it's over 200 uh, families have, or people, have, employees have done that over, over the years. And it's, it's a significant step, and it's another element of the university's commitment uh, to, to the neighborhood. Uh, so, so there's just there's just real connections. There's a different kind of connection that, that I want to I want to talk about, um, and this is this is a part of the academic experience of their parents' basements. Look at look at computer screens and complete college in that way, and. You know, what did you need, what did you need a college for, residential college for? And, and, and Bill Gates, in fact, you probably heard him. Uh, Bill Gates, along, along that time, said that, that college was just, uh, you know, was for the, the, the parties, and there's sort of nothing else to it. And uh, as dean of a college at that time, to have somebody like that, you know, predicting our future in that way was pretty scary. And it, asked, it prompted me to ask the question, well, why are we here? And engage with the local community. And so that, that prompted uh, the, the growth of the development of a program in community-based education. And the goal of that program, I want to be very clear, is not students volunteering in the community. I mean, that's a good thing, and they can do that, and that can help. But it's that students can, educations can be richer by engaging with the community that they're in, learning from community partners, learning about where they are, having their history, uh, and the arts, and, and, and the economic development, all the kinds of things that are going on, if they engage with that in a real and meaningful way, that their education can be richer, and it can, it can Contribute. Yeah, it was the next morning. It was a Saturday, right for a Saturday morning, and I took my daughter to uh, Aberdeen Square. Is that, is that right for Square Fair? Does that does that still happen? That's okay. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I took her there for Square Fair, and and, and our, the dean at the, at the time lived in the neighborhood too, and I saw him there. He was dressed up in a clown suit, as I re as I recall, and I I talking to him. My daughter couldn't understand why I was talking to the clown. Um, but, but he said, I want to see you in my office at 8 a.m. Monday morning. I spent the rest of the weekend terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that he was going to say, sorry, I left the not out of the sentence. I uh, did not the tenure. Uh, I, I thought he was going to tell me that was in the next uh, a year and a half or so ago. Oh. I stepped down from that. I was on the uh, on my way back to being a philosophy professor again. I was, had some new courses I wanted to teach, and I said some research I wanted to do, uh, a additional new book I wanted to write, and uh, I got a, a phone call from the then chair of the board, Danny Wegman, and, and uh, I assumed you know, he called the wrong number or something, and you know, why would he be calling me? Uh, but anyway, asking me to become, uh, to step in as president, uh, given uh, in the light of what had been going on at the university. And so, uh, with, after some discussion, I, I agreed to do that. And, and in my time as, as president, my, my goal has been to, my, a primary focus, in addition to all the usual business of the university, there have been two things that have been especially uh, central to me and connected things. 
One has to do with campus culture and climate and, and sort of the, the values that, that drive the university. And, and uh, uh, we've, we've established a new set of, uh, call it our, it's our vision and values. And, and uh, the seven principles that make up the vision and values are uh, Meliora, or better, our motto, equity, leadership, integrity, openness, respect, and accountability. And those are the those are the values that uh, we want everyone at the university to live by. And and uh, I talk about all of this because it, it, in connection with this co this commitment to to values for the, on the part of the university, we're building it or creating a new office uh, for the vice president who will um, the chief diversity officer. It's called but. Uh, Vice President for Equity and Inclusion, and in thinking about that, one of the one of the things that's been really central is that uh, as part of that notion of equity and inclusion is community engagement and connection with the community and how how the members of the university interact with, with the community around us, and we're figuring out how to how to connect those activities, and so so this is a this is a real priority uh, for me. And, and uh, as was mentioned a couple of years ago, I was a co-chair um, along with my dear friend, Paul Burgett, to many, I, hope, I suspect many of you know, passed away uh, a few months ago. But Paul and I uh, did co-chair a commission on uh, race and diversity at the university. And that, that uh, too, addressed issues of campus climate and culture and inclusiveness and how we treat all to the campus with, with the 19th Ward to, to, map, to uh, strengthen, to work with you on how our, we can make that relationship stronger. I welcome ideas and suggestions about that. Um, are, are so far from the insular, separated institution that we were to taking that role and seeing that role as, as vital to uh, what we do. Um, I, I want to just uh, then uh, mention one other topic before I before I come up or, or conclude. Uh, Department of Public Safety that has raised some concerns, and I, I don't think now is the time to, to really go into any of the details. But what I do want to say, I got a letter from from uh, from the Community Association about that. I replied, and and uh, there's no decisions made regarding that proposal. And I want to guarantee to all of you that we will partner with you, we will talk with, with the community about this proposal, make sure we have input and discussion before any decisions are made. We are at the beginning of a process, the beginning of a discussion of this idea. And, uh, some, some people have uh, thought that it's a done deal, but that's absolutely not true. Uh, we're, we're starting a process and we're thinking about what we want to do on that. And I'm sorry if somehow a misimpression uh, was made about, was given about uh, where we stand. So uh, that's the beginning of a process, uh, one, and one that will be inclusive and open to discussion, and, and we'll figure out exactly how to do that. But uh, 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 it will happen. So, uh, with that said, let me just uh, emphasize, and once again, I'm happy to be here. I'm delighted to, to talk with you and, and uh, to uh, just reiterate the, the value of the university that I personally, and on behalf of the university, our commitment to the, to the neighborhood, to being good partners, to understanding how we can best work with you, and uh, to in, make sure to invite you to make sure to understand that if there's questions, if there's issues, we're happy to hear them, and, and we want to talk. We want to we want to be good neighbors and good partners, and uh, we're always open to hearing how we can do better and where there's opportunities for engagement and connection. Uh, you know, we do want to know. So uh, uh, thank you, and uh, once again, uh, it's good to good to be back in the neighborhood. Good to see all of you. And I don't know if the plan was for questions or not. Um, if there's time, I'm happy to take questions for a few minutes. Always happy to. Yes? Yeah, I heard that um, the 19th Ward wants a seat on your advisory board as it relates to things that the university is, is uh, doing that impact our community. And I was wondering, has a decision been made about that? So the, 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 the case is people can hear the questions about having a seat on an advisory board regarding uh, activities in the neighborhood, uh, things that impact the neighborhood. Um, 
So there's no, no decision about that. What I, will, what I will guarantee, what I can absolutely promise, is that there will be opportunities for discussion, for input, for engagement on that. Whether it's a seat on the board or not, I'm not yet sure. But we're trying to figure out, we haven't figured out what the, what the committee's gonna be like and who's gonna be on it. But uh, no doubt there will be ample opportunities for, for discussion and views will be heard. So, so that's what I can promise. The decisions won't be made about our community without our input. Absolutely right. And absolutely right. No doubt there will be input. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you were speaking to something that you all are at the beginning yeah. uh, process of yeah. uh, discussing. And, and um, you know, the, the uh, community is not currently at the, not presently at the table, correct? So one of the things I would just suggest is um, I'm not even sure exactly what the subject is. You didn't speak to what exactly it is. But um, if there's a beginning conversation, then there may be a need to have the community as part of the beginning of the, the conversation so that way there's some ownership in moving yes. forward. Yes, I mean, we're just getting started and we will make sure the community people are part of it. Okay. Right, right. You, no said, you said we're, we're just getting started, so the community, it, you know, transparency. I'm forming, I'm forming a committee, and so, okay. so, and I haven't done it. I mean, I just, okay. I just decided there would be one, and, and so when I do, people will know. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Just a suggestion. Yeah. So, um, as a former, fa former faculty member, okay. there are times when we've tried to reach out to certain departments. For example, we have a historic cemetery here in the 19th Ward, the Rapid Cemetery, which is, goes back to the Revolutionary War. And so it's very hard for people outside the university to figure out how to contact people in the university. Yeah. You have a huge web presence, but trying to find out who do you contact about a research opportunity that, that maybe some history professor wants to come look at the cemetery? Uh, we have some, we have a number of faculty here already, but trying to crack into that just to get somebody on the phone is very yeah. challenging. So, so one of the ideas, and I hope this universities can move pretty slowly, and it takes a while. It takes a while to to, to make things happen, but. I believe that over the coming months, we will create a position that will sort of be the community, that will, that will be the point place, you know, the, the starting point for community engagement. So that's not to say there'll be a person there you can call and that person will, will be able to answer your question, but it will be able to get you to the person, uh, to the person that can. One of the things that's happening right now, uh, I'll make this very quick, it's, it, I have a committee in place, it's a couple dozen people from all around the university, and they're identifying all the different ways in which all the different parts of the university interact with the Rochester community. And we're gonna assemble all of that information. People inside the university will be able to find ways you know, if there's things they're interested in doing, they'll be able to know what's available. People outside the university will be able to know what's already going on, what they can connect to, and through the development of that, we will have a, a, a place will be, it, it, it should, if we do it right, you'll know, here's who you call. I think that's really important, and it's for communications about both ways. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's not right in the 19th Ward. College Town is a big part of this area. Yes. And it appears to be languishing badly. Uh, the university was a big proponent of that, and it, for the to neighbors, it really hasn't worked out, I think, the way it was supposed to. What are the university's plans to reinvigorate College Town to make it um, just more vibrant for uh, both sides of the river? Um. I don't have a lot, to, a lot to say about that. I, I can, I can speak to, uh, I can speak to it. Uh, to uh, um, I, here's what I can say. Uh, it, it's true. I, I think it, it would be, it, it wouldn't be. I'm not going to dispute your claim about it, it not being as vibrant as as we had as we had hoped. 
So some of the space is, is now office space and being used in, in different kinds of ways rather than retail space. I know that the developer continues to work with, with um, retail, you know, restaurants and stores, and a couple of things are coming along. Some of the space that's now uh, empty is going to be occupied uh, pretty soon, so, so there is some development or, or growth there. Uh, the developer continues to try to work to, to try to strengthen what's there. I think one of the things that's happened is figuring out what kinds of uh, retail restaurants and retail space works there and, and whatnot, and, and to try to, to get a more successful mix of, of things there. Uh, the university doesn't have an enormous amount of control over that because, you know, it's not, we don't own it, it's not our space, it, it's, it's privately developed. We partnered with them in trying to help it to happen, but it's, it's not a private, you know, it's not ours to, to, to uh, do. Um, so we're all eager to see it, 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 it's, it uh, succeed. Um, All right, you can give one more round of applause to the interim president of New York.